Welcome back to the channel, the Warriors. We are still growing. I want to thank everybody. We're right there around from 10,000 subscribers in under two months. Nuts. All right. This episode right here, and a lot of you have kind of been inquiring, is about specialized units in the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Well, I so happen to be a part of the Crisis Response Team, CRT. Right, formerly known as CERT, S E R T, Special Entry Response Team, I believe. Right, I wasn't S E R T, I was C R T. The name changed, a couple things have changed, the program have changed over the years for the better, as far as training, right, from what I gather. Not to take away from the OGs, OGs in anything are always going to be the pioneers, right? And my hat's off to those individuals. Now, what is it? Well, it's equivalent to a SWAT team out on the streets. Uh, equivalent training. I mean, even the hostage negotiations portion is FBI training, right? That training derived from there, came from there. So, how I, how I came to get on that team, right? I got it. I got out of the army in 2005. After I went, mind you, I was in Iraq from 2004 all the way to 2005. It was a 13 month deployment. Right. I got out, I partied hard. I joined the department in 2006. So there was that one year gap where I was just hitting rock bottom. When I got to the institution, Sentinella State Prison, I was approached by a lieutenant there, and he said, hey, have you ever considered the crisis response team? I, this is exactly what I told him. I said, no, sir, my days of running and gunning are over. Meaning, I was tired of running around with a gun doing things. I had just got back from Iraq a year prior. I was, <laughs> I was done, right? It's one of those things where you're just exhausted, mentally and physically. I was aware of who was on the team at Sentinella, the team members of the crisis response team. I would see them, they would interact, you'd see them around, you'd kind of know, right? I, at the time, I was not interested, had no interest, no desire. I had already got mine, right? My, my chance of running and gunning. That's what I, that's what we kind of, what I refer to it in the tactical world. Uh, whatever you guys want to call it, trigger time, door kicking, it's all the same shit what I'm talking about. So, 10 years passed, right? 10 whole years from the time I became a correctional officer. Mind you, this team is something that new people, for the ma majority, the majority, about 98% of if you're brand new to the top department, you're motivated, you, you want to do a little extra, that's that. <laughs> I had already some time in, right? I already had experience on the line. Which to me, that says enough in itself. But right? I'm not coming in blind. I had my previous military experience. I had my line experience as a correctional officer on the level 4 GP and bouncing around different level three GP yards at Sentinella. When I promote to Donovan, they just so happen to be having those uh, tryouts, the crisis response team tryouts. The commander there at the time, we were working Delta Yard, I was his sergeant, he was the lieutenant, asked me, hey, have you ever considered CRT, the crisis response team? And I said, you know what? Yeah, yeah, because something had, I had, I had gotten bored, right, and I could kind of get bored easily, even though I've gotten older, even though I'm sober, I still had that, uh, that fucking drive inside of me, to do something else, to do something better, to thrive, right, and that's what I saw as that opportunity, I said, you know what? Yeah. He said, cool. 
We're having tryouts like in a month. All right, let's do this. CRT tryouts. You do have to be physically fit, all right? You're not going to be a slob and make it through the tryout. You're not going to be the type of guy that just pumps iron at the gym, right? Gets their pecs going, gets their buys going. You're not going to be... It's not going to work out, right? It's a test of, it's a test of endurance, strength, leadership. Uh, and mind you, while you're going through the assessment, we're observing if you're half-assing it, if you're giving it your all, right? You don't got to be the strongest. You don't got to be the fastest, right? You just have to have that no quit and don't be a buddy fucker mentality. This is something I always said about the army. You don't have to be the fastest and you don't have to be the strongest. I just need you right up in the fucking front with me when she hits the fan. And I will always hold to that. I've seen... I'm giving you my perspective of the army and, and, and how I viewed CRT, right? One thing that drove me nuts, absolutely nuts, and you guys are going to get straight forward right here. The majority, and again, the majority of crisis response team members were not in the military, right? There's, there's majority, there's minority, right? Mind you, 50-50%, whatever you want to call it. It used to drive me nuts. Absolutely kill me. When the ones that were not in the military would say, Hey, hey, just so you know, this is not like the military, man. Like, we do things different here. And I would be like, well, first of all, you would have had to been in the military for you to even make that comment. Because how the fuck would you know what we did or what we didn't do? right? That's that. That's how I felt about that. My perspective, my vantage point, it's almost like, fuck, I don't want to say that they were intimidated. Yeah, it almost like they were intimidated by the military aspect of things like, like a shortcoming, like a jab, like saying, hey, man, this is ours. This is our thing. Anyways, any, no specialized unit should ever be like that, right? It shouldn't be that way. It should be, what I talk about managers, fair across the board, right? Professionalism. Anyhow, once you go through the tryouts, there is a, there's a whole process and procedure to it, right? It's a whole kind of method to the madness. And if you so happen to be selected, right, because it is a selection, you will then um, go to your academies, right? Your academies were now, you go from being a potential team member, a PTM, and I understood, I understood that, hey man, you're the low man on the totem pole, you got to do this, you got to do that, kind of like the bitch work. Right? And that's what takes some humbleness. To be able to be a fucking door kicker and a fucking soul snatcher. To having to reset and be at the bottom again. Like that's just, that's just it. Right? You got to be humble. You got to know where you're, where you stand. Right? Once you go to those academies, you're going to receive the training. The training is good. Oh my God, the training is good. The, uh. So, in the army, we were taught to hit, like, a body. Like, here's a body, right? You're going to hit, you're going to hit a dude. For sure, you're going to hit a dude, right? Center mass in the army. Well, it doesn't matter where you hit the guy in war or in combat. Like, it, if you aim center mass and you do a double tap, pop, pop. With a 5.56, five, a 2.23, two, they're going to drop. Well, they're not, mind you, they're not just going to drop over dead like the movies. You're, you're eventually going to drop the dude, right? Whatever it takes. 
or her, whatever your enemy combatant is. So accuracy is, hey, just hit the person. Crisis response team, surgical precision shooting. Surgical. I mean, it's hostage, uh, hostage rescue. You, where you aim is where you hit. For a fact, 100%. So I did did enjoy that. Oh my God. Wow. Loving it. Right? Where you aim is where you hit. I can't clarify. I can't elaborate more on that. So it's not just a matter of hit them wherever. You're hitting them where you want to hit them. Them. The bad guy. That's a plus. It's always going to be a plus. Right? Accuracy. Aim small, miss small. Fucking beautiful. You go to your academies, right? You are put in a team. Your team, your institution's team. You're going to be the low man on the totem pole, right? It's just the fucking way it is. I don't give a fuck. It's so... Now, mind you, I, I'm all about respect. You guys know about respect, right? What you're not going to do is disrespect me or belittle me. Fuck. Especially when I fucking can run circles around certain people and or experience what I experience. It's just not going to happen. Not going to happen, right? It's how I carry myself. It's my demeanor. It's my push, my drive. So be cautious on that, right? Don't. We used to call it like breaking. Don't break your soldiers, right? Don't. There's unnecessary shit that should not be happening. But I'm not saying that there is. You know what I mean. So, you do that. There are leadership positions within the ranks. Right? Hostage negotiation training. I'm not going to elaborate too much on that. But just watch any fucking FBI movie. And I keep referencing that agency because that's a, the, the training. Right? Uh Waco, that happened in Texas, Ruby Ridge, all of these are examples, right? Either good or bad of what we did or shouldn't have done as a result of negotiations, right? Hostage negotiation. To me, that fucking training was the best training I've ever received. Fuck, man, probably in my life because it was mental. The mental... And I even said at the academy, at the negotiations academy, I said, any dummy can kick in a door. This fucking mind right here. Yeah, and I was calling myself a dummy too. This mind right here is fucking. You can't. That's like playing chess. Like chess versus checkers to me, right? And especially like, yeah, I had to get that other stuff out of my system. But whatever floats your boat. I'm just telling you from my perspective that was that was a shit. That was badass, right? I enjoyed that. Truly enjoyed that. How, how I came to be the crisis response team commander. All right, I already told you I worked for the warden before. That was not good. And he asked me to be his right-hand man. And I kind of didn't have a choice in the matter because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Right? Well, he, in within the same week, asked me to be the crisis response team commander. I told him, absolutely not. Not doing it, no way in hell. I said, do you know what that's going to look like? I said, it's going to look like I bamboozled my way up here and I ratted on everybody and now you're giving me this position and I'm just, you know, you can't shine too bright. And some of you guys will understand what I'm talking about, right? On both sides of the house. You shine too bright, it's not a good look. So I told him no. I told him no. I told him no two times. By the third time that he asked me, Oh, it's one of those things. He's not asking anymore. He's fucking telling you. And it's not going to end well. Right? And that happened as a result of some technicalities with the previous commander. A couple of investigations. Blah, blah, blah. It, that fucking spot opened up. Right? It, pff, drama. To say the least. Now I'm the commander. Right? Right? The fact that I didn't have much time on the teams didn't sit well with the rest of the team. But to me, in my head, I'm like, oh my God, dude, I've just been fucking doing this since I was 17, right? Running around with guns. It's 
kind of what I do, right? I'm not a fucking mechanic. I don't know how to work on computers. Fucking barely uploading these fucking YouTube videos, right? So, I love it though, man. I love you guys. So, with that being said, like, hey, this is my fucking realm. This is my element. Like, I, I'm comfortable. I, I thrive in chaos. I love this shit. Not that I love it. Right, nobody really, like, I, I would just, ra I'm older now, man, so it's fucking chill. But, the role of crisis response team commander, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Even with the stress and of the, the other job and the struggles, I enjoyed it. The reason I enjoyed it was because it was an honor to serve the people beneath me. Right, and that's what it should always be, you serving them, right, because they're the ones putting in the hard work, they're the ones that are in the trenches, as I call it. The type of people that are drawn to, the, to, the, to those types of teams are alphas, right, alpha males or alpha females. To have to oversee alpha personalities is challenging, Oh my God, there's shit like wild shit. It's like, it's, I enjoyed it. It was as much as it got challenging, as much as I'm like, fuck this. I'm throwing in my head. I'm going to throw in the towel. Oh my God. Now for that one, I didn't throw in the towel. That previous commander cleared all his investigations, rightfully so, got his position back. Rightfully so, I wasn't even tripping. At that point, it was kind of a relief. So, I've told you about the assessment, you have to be physically fit, morally straight, have your right head on your shoulders, I've told you about the academies, good training, surgical shooting, I've told you about the Hostin Negotiations Academy, I loved it, I loved it, exhausting, mentally exhausting, rewarding, it, it just, it whole nother level. Told you about my time as a commander. It was uh, fucking interesting to say the least, man. But let me tell you about the crisis response team program. All right. It is never about an individual. It is never about one individual. And this is what I try to embed into my men. It's about the program. Right. The program is a great fucking program. I'm glad, grateful for it. I enjoyed it. Can we always get better? We can always get better. And that's what we do. We thrive to get better. But I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it, right? Uh, it was what I needed at that time. I could I checked the block, as you can say, not because I wanted to pad my, my resume, but because at that time I needed that passion, right? I needed that extra thrive. Uh, if you have any questions about that, hit me up on my Instagram, Hector underscore underscore Bravo, right? We can go into more detail. Other than that, the message for today is we can always get better. Always. Never settle. Never settle ne in any fucking thing that you do, whether you're working out, whether you're raising children, whether you're a spouse, whether you're fucking putting tiles on the rooftop, we can always get better better in everything that we do, all right? Keep pushing forward.